northeast part of the Americas, or also known as the woodlands. The woodland summers are very hot, and the winters aren't the worst, but they're not great either. There are mountains everywhere you look, and they are surrounded by forests and lots of rivers and trees and lakes. The Iroquois were a native tribe of Americans located in what is now modern-day New York. The Iroquois were a tribe of hunters and gatherers, and farmers. The Iroquois would grow a trio of plants called the Three Sisters, which were corn, squash, and beans. They were said to be the physical and spiritual sustainers of life. Each tribe of the Iroquois which was made up of several clans. These clans were usually led by the eldest. Each tribe of the Iroquois were led by the eldest and wisest female. The Iroquois lived in long wooden houses made from trees. Trees. Clothing-wise, the Iroquois used the hides of woodland animals that they had killed. They would also wear large headdresses, which were worn by both men and women. The game of lacrosse, which is Canada's national sport, was invented by the Iroquois. The Iroquois Confederacy, which was formed in the year 1142, their system of government influenced by the formation of the United States representative democracy. The Iroquois society declined after the cultural division between themselves and the mass production of gun which far outclass their own weapons. The Iroquois and government lives in their own little part of our own lives. There is not much known about the Wenro tribe, but from what we do know, they are a hunter and gatherer tribe. They did what they could to survive, so they ate what they could find, which included mostly corn, beef, squaw and squash. They had the same influence in the beat wars with a three-way alliance with the Airy tribe, and they were also close with, the na- with their neighbors, the Iroquois tribe. Sickness ran through the Wenro tribe, causing much of their people to pass on, and then finish them off. The Iroquois tribe invaded them at their weakest state. The last remaining Wenro people fled to Ontario across the Niagara River. Nothing else is known about them, or where they are now. Today, we are going to talk about the southeast region and two specific tribes called the Chickasaw and the Trochee. Some of the upper states of the southeast region were rocky because of the Appalachian Mountains, although the lower parts are mostly flat and known for their beautiful sandy beaches. The southeast region has a mostly humid and subtropical climate. The first tribe we're going to cover is the Chickasaw. Typically, the original Chickasaw tribes would live in small villages. Their homes were small, usually just having one room made of wood framing and ribs consisting of mud and straw. Their clothing was made of skins and hides. The women would wear skirts and dresses. The Chickasaw people had a mixed diet. The women would grow food such as beans and corn, while the men hunted. Some of their dishes included cornbread, stews, and soup. Tea was a pretty popular drink as well. They were the builders of some of the first schools and banks, as well as businesses in the Indian Territory. Other than that, they did not have much more of lasting impact as they were the last tribe to be removed by the U.S. government. They were forced, along with other tribes, to move west in order to make way for settlers and immigrants who wanted to take their land by a treaty that they could not read parts of in order to trick them into needing to leave. The next tribe we will be talking about is the Cherokee. The roles of the Cherokee people were pretty basic. The women would farm and grow crops while the men hunted. The children didn't have a whole lot of time to play, but they did have dolls and games among the tribe. Lacrosse was an especially popular sport. Their homes were circular, made of sticks, plaster, and river cane. Their diet was very similar to the Chickasaw, consisting of corn, beans, deer, and such. They drank something called the black drink, which was popular in the tribe. The ending of the Cherokee freed up land for the American settlers to use, as, as well as the land caused an increase in the U.S.'s population, but this also expanded the U.S.'s reach on slavery. However, they were also one of the first people in Indians to make roads along with, and along with the other tribes, the removal of them resulted in a huge loss of cultural identity. The downfall of the Cherokee was mostly due to the removal of them from their land due to racial prejudice harbored towards them by most Southerners, as well as being removed by the U.S. government due to gold being found on Cherokee land and the war between the Cherokee and the U.S. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation of the Southeastern There was a continental climate which had hot summers and cold winters. They have low precipitation and a lot of wind. 
Their major source of humidity is from the Gulf of Mexico. The landforms in the Great Plains are low hills and incised stream valleys. They also have sand hills and black hills. There are cliffs, deep canyons, and plateaus. Their main diet was bison, but they also ate deer, elk, and rabbits. The women in the tribe collected berries. Women's role were to support their husbands with anything they do and also their biggest weapons. The men would do the hunting, and sometimes they would go to war to defend their people. Men wore leggings, shirts, and breech clothing, and the women would wear long deerskin dresses. The Blackfeet were one of the first Native American tribes to head west. Members of the Blackfeet Nation in the United States primarily descended to the South Piagin. To this day, we use the land for cultural and spiritual purposes. Reason for Collapse Their territory was encroached by European Americans and Canadians and were forced to other lands and move into smaller Indian reservations in the U.S. and Canada. Their primary food source was bison. They also hunted deer and elk. They would dry bison meat to a jerky and it would be stored to last a year. Women would wear fringe dresses and the men would wear fringe shirts and leggings. But in the winter they would wear fur robes and leggings. The women would be in charge of the house and that's all they would do. While the men would be hunters, warriors, and make sure their family is fed and warm. The Sioux eventually fell due to the Great Sioux War. The Americans found out that there was gold on the tribe's land. The Sioux refused to make a deal. This caused the war. Eventually, the Sioux dissipated. The Sioux lasted for 3,000 years. One thing that made them last as long as they did is because they farmed and were busy 24-7. They were also very productive, strong, and powerful. They were also called the Lakota. They stayed up towards South Dakota and the Black Hills. The Blackfeet were located in the Northern Hemisphere, meaning it would get incredibly warm in the summer and cold during the winter. The temperature ranged from 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer to 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. Daily life in the Chinook. Men and women were considered equal. They mostly traded fish products, fur, carvings, cedar wood, and slaves. They were fishermen, hunters, and they carved canoes. The environment influenced their culture. The climate of the northwest coast was mild and rainy, and there were frequent cloudy skies. Blue Walla Mountains and Cascade Range, Central Oregon Plateau and Basin and Range. Lasting effects of the Chinook. The Chinook obtained federal recognition in 2001, but it was taken away 18 months later. They aren't recognized anymore as a tribe and don't have a reservation. Reason for the Chinook societal decline. The government declared the Chinook tribe as non-existent, so they didn't get a reservation, and the tribe broke up. The Chinook diet was mostly berries and some mammals, and also with some herbs, and even shellfish. They ate 70 different types of plants because it gave them lots of nutrition and lots of health benefits. Families traveled to the mountains where men hunted deer, elk, mountain goats, and bear. The women collected bulbs, roots, berries, and seeds. The coastal Tlingit people lived on beaches and islands in the southeastern Alaska panhandle, tucked between the tidewater and the rugged coastal mountains. Heavy rainfall made a luxurious rainforest environment and a tempered climate more than the Seattle acreage. Tlingit daily life. They lived by and relied on the ocean. They ate mostly fish and shellfish. They lived in cedar plank houses with bark roofs. The Tlingit diet was mostly berries and some mammals. They also had herbs and even shellfish. They ate different types of plants because it gave them nutrition and health benefits. Families traveled to the mountains where men hunted deer, elk, mountain goat, and bear. Women collected roots, berries, 
and seeds. Reason for the Tlingit societal decline. In the 1800s, half the tribe died from smallpox. Mines and logging forced them out of their homes. Lasting effects of the Tlingit. The Tlingit made and owned a lot of mountain ore passes. They made potlatches, which is like a feast. Southwest climate is mostly dry, hot, much of the region is known as arid. Dry conditions are throughout the Great Plains, Colorado Plateau, and Basin and Range. Cold conditions are normally in higher altitudes, especially within the Rocky Mountains. Most of the Southwest makes up of the Rocky Mountains, but there is also the coastal plains in the Great Plains. Uh, they lived in a bunch of small family groups. Each family lived near their land or their farmland. The men hunted for meat and the woman took care of the animals and the farm. They lived in homes called Hogan's, which was a little earth house. They mainly ate from their farms like corn, squash, and other vegetables, but they would also eat their sheep and other animals that the men brought home from their hunts. The white people at the time killed a lot of Nigel livestock, so they had less food for them, and they left their reservation looking for a wedge job. They had a tense and peaceful relationship with the Spanish. They raided and got raided by some of their tribes in the area, and they also traded with them. They still have their reservation, which is 27,000 square miles with 250,000 residents. They either lived in the Great Plains or the Rocky Mountains. They were different groups that either hunted for meat or farmed and gathered berries. They would live in a teepee-like structure, but some were also made of wood, and they would have a fire in the middle of their teepees to either stay warm or cook. The men mainly ate a bunch of berries and nuts and whatever else the men got from their hunt, which was mainly deer, rabbits, and whatnot. They would also make jerky from the meat to help preserve it. Late 1800s, the United States government began forcible removing the extermination of the Western Indians, including the Apaches. Most historians agree the final defeat of the Apache happened in the Jiromo's defeat data of September 4th, 1886. They regularly traded with other tribes and their territory back then as part of the U.S. today. They are somewhat spread out living on five different reservations.